Bubble tea is one of my all-time favorite drinks, specifically taro milk tea. One of the main reasons I love bubble tea so much is because you get to customize it exactly how you like it. And that got me thinking, how many different taro milk tea combinations are possible? Hmm. Example one. This question is essentially asking us, what is the sample space? The first choice we gotta choose is the size. We can either choose a regular, which is what I got, or if you're extra thirsty, you could go with a jumbo. Second, you gotta choose your toppings, or should I say, bottomings. I decided to go with a standard boba, but you could also choose no boba. And then from there, you have to choose how much sugar you want in the drink. You could go 100%, 50%, or no sugar at all. You actually can choose the ice too, but I don't wanna make the problem too long. And now we're ready to write down all those possible combinations. So first, let's start with a regular bubble tea with boba and 100% sugar. That would be our first combination. The next one would then be regular boba, 50% sugar. Then regular boba and no sugar. So those are some combinations with regular and boba. Next, we could go regular no boba and 100% sugar. Regular no boba and 50% sugar. You kind of get where I'm going. So let's fill in the rest of the combinations and now you can see all of those make up our sample space. The sample space is the set of all of those possible outcomes. And so now we're ready to answer our question. How many different taro milk tea combinations can we make? It looks like we can make 12. Here's one to try on your own. All right, example two. What is the probability of spinning an even number, a blue, and then flipping tails? So this is a compound event because it consists of three different events. First, we're gonna spin the numbered spinner, then we're gonna spin the colored spinner, and then lastly, we're gonna flip a coin. So three different events. Obviously, if you look, I don't know about you, I don't really wanna make a tree diagram again and start off with, what is it, eight different numbers, and then what do we got, five different colors, and then head or tails. That's gonna be a massive tree diagram. So let's think, is there another way that can help us find out the sample space? How many different uh, possible outcomes are there? Let's look back to the first example. We first had to choose the size, and then the toppings, and then lastly, the sugar level. And there were two sizes, two toppings, boba or not boba, and three options for the sugar. And the total number of possible outcomes was 12. And if you're saying, well, you just multiply the outcomes from each event, you're exactly right. For that first example, if we just go two times two times three, we would also get 12 for our sample space, which is the total number of outcomes. So let's use that. That's actually called the fundamental counting principle, kind of a fancy name. But essentially all it means is, if you're trying to find the total possible outcomes for a compound event, just multiply the number of outcomes for each event together. So let's do that for uh, this example. Well, there's eight options on that first spinner. There's eight numbers. Uh, and then the, the colors, there's actually five different colors. And then flipping a coin, well, there's only tails or heads, so there's only two options for that. So if we use the fundamental counting principle, we can multiply all of those. Eight times five is 40, times two is 80. So the total possible outcomes is gonna be 80. Great, that goes in our denominator. Now, for the probability of an even number, a blue, or a uh, tails, we need to find how many favorable outcomes there are. Well, what are our options for an even number? Let's start there. We could get a two, that's an even number, a four, a six, or an eight. So we've got four options there. Then we have to choose a blue, so we only got that one option there. And then we have to flip a tail, so we only got one option there. So our favorable outcomes then would be a two blue tail, four blue tails, 
six blue tails or eight blue tails. So how many favorable outcomes are there? Four. That goes in our numerator. So the probability of an even number, a blue, and a tails is gonna be four out of 80, but obviously we can simplify that. That's gonna to simplify to 1 20th or 5%. Here's one more to try on your own. Lastly, I would love to give a very special shout out to Ms. Cuellar and some very special students from Ms. Cedar's class at Oregon Episcopal School in Portland. Thank you so much, Ellie, Ziva, Lily, Jane, and Blakely. Thanks for all the support.